As Linux administrators, our users are a valuable asset because if we didn't have users, we wouldn't even need to manage Linux servers. We'd have nobody using it. So the thing is too, though, that users can also be the bane of our existence, but you know, they, they might uh, foobar something important or break something, but you know, that's just the way it goes. But you know, either way, we love our users and it's important to know how to manage our users. And in this video, what I wanna do really quickly is show you how to create new users, remove users, add groups, and remove groups. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna have an introduction to user and group management. So before we get started, there's a very important file that you need to know when it comes to users. And that is this one, Etsy passwd, or as we just pronounce, Etsy password. And if we take a look at this file, we can see a list of all the users on our system. And here we have quite a few actually. And I, no, I didn't actually create all these users. There's actually going to be system users that I'm not going to get into that come into play when we install different applications or packages. These aren't users that we would actually log in with. In fact, it even says no login right here. So we could pretty much automatically tell any time that we have a user that's not intended to log into the system. Although that isn't the case in every situation. We don't have no login here, for example. And uh, we also see root, which is our main user here. That's our primary user, the most powerful user of all, but we also see all the system users. When you get down here, we also see some users that are actual users, like here's my user account, for example. And we can see some information here. We can see that, we can see the user ID and the group ID that I have been assigned. And we have my user, uh, my actual name right here, my home directory. So that's my home directory. That's where that's set. And we have the default shell, which has been bash. And I'm not going to go over all of this right here, but I do want to make sure you know, it, you know, what this file is and what it's for. Now, one thing to pay attention to is this little X right here. What does that actually mean? Well, basically here we have different fields that are separated by colons and we have the X and the X is actually where the password goes. But instead of the password actually being here, we have an actual X, which basically means that the password isn't going to be listed here. That's actually going to be in a separate file. We don't want the password to be viewable in plain text. That would be a security issue. But we see I have a user account here. This is also an actual user as well. This one is Simone, which is a user I create on all of my Linux instances. That is a bot or a user that runs automated tasks on my laptops and my servers. And that's just an automated thing. And I used Simone, which is short for Simulation 1, which is basically, if you've ever seen the movie Simone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's kind of like a little Easter egg. That was one of my favorite movies for some reason. Most people didn't like it. But anyway, uh, that's what I named this user after is uh, Simone from the movie. And what she does is she logs in and runs scripts. But she's got a user account here as well. She has a home directory. She also has a shell. We have some other things like NTP, for example. That's another service that runs in the background. But most of the time, UIDs 1000 and above are actually going to be users and anything under that is a system user most of the time. Now, here we have a UID of 998 and I gave that UID to Simone because I don't want her to show up on the login screen. Most Linux distributions, when you have a laptop or a desktop distribution with a graphical user interface, will not show users on the login screen that have a UID below 1000, which is why I gave her UID 998. So what is a U UID? So a UID is just a numerical representation of a user and it has to be unique. So I have UID 1000 right here. There can't be another one. And then of course we also have the group ID right here. So what I wanna show you guys real quick is the Etsy shadow because that's actually what this refers to right here. It's a file, Etsy Shadow, and that's where the password is actually contained. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. Let's take a look at that file. It's Etsy Shadow, just like that. Permission denied. Well, actually, I knew that would happen. Etsy Shadow is not something we want everyone to be able to view because that does contain some information that's probably best not leaked. But I can view it if I do sudo 
in front of that sudo cat etsy shadow and an interesting trick though is i could just do sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark to repeat the most recent command i've run but put sudo in front of it interesting trick will save you some time and i'll press enter and we can see the actual etsy shadow file right here and then we actually see my password hash and it's not going to actually show my true password. It's going to show the hash. And not all of these users are going to have passwords because maybe they're just system users. But mine, that's an actual user account right there. And we have the password hash. So there's my password hash. I'm not going to go over all of this right here because that's beyond the scope of this video. But I wanted you to know what the purpose of Etsy shadow was and not so Etsy password. We'll get back to the video in just a moment. But before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. But there's also another file that's important, and that is Etsy group. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that, Etsy group. Now we see a list of groups that, that are on the system. If you've used group management in any other application, you probably already know what that is, what that means to you. Basically, users can be members of groups, and you can limit certain actions to groups and then allow people to use a specific thing if they're a member of the group. Now, for example, you can limit using scanners to members of the scanner group. For example, we also have an Ansible group, which is one that I've added. We see that Simone and myself are both a member of that group. And we also have like a VBox users group as well and so on. We have quite a few groups. We also see the group ID. So if we go back to the um, Etsy password file, we can see that my group ID is 1000. Well, what is 1000? Let's check that out. Cat Etsy group. And we see that group J, which is mine, is the group ID of 1000. So that's how that is mapped. But it's probably simpler just to simply type the word groups, which will show you what, which groups you are a member of. So you don't actually have to, you know, use or actually view the text file for that, you can just simply type groups and it will show you. But you can also do groups and then a username, press enter, and then you can see what groups another user is a member of. In this case, you know, Simone is a member of her own group, but also the Ansible group as well. So how do you create a user? Well, that's actually pretty easy. You just simply do add user, and then the name of the user that you want to create. And I am going to create user Batman because Batman is awesome. And I'll press enter. And we can see right here, the first problem, only root is able to create users. So what we actually need to do is use sudo and then add user and then the name of the user we want to create. So this will work. So I'll go ahead and press enter. And we can see some interesting information here. It's basically going to create a group for that user with the same name as the user itself. It's going to use the first available group ID, which in this case is 1002. Group ID 1001 is already used. And it's going to create the user Batman. And then the user ID is going to be 1001. And it's going to make it a member of the Batman group, which is right here. It's going to create the home directory, home Batman. And it's going to copy files from slash Etsy slash scale. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the password. It's wanting me to create a password for him. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll retype it again. And then this information here, you can leave it blank. You can fill it out if you want to. It doesn't really matter too much. If you're working at a company, maybe this will be helpful if you had some information here. You know, like full name, room number, work phone, home phone, 
and some other things. But I'll press enter to accept the default of yes. And we can already see that some things have changed. If I was to ls slash home, we have slash home slash Batman right here. So we know that it has a user directory. And if I do a cat against Etsy password, we see Batman is listed right here. And then Etsy group, we see Batman group is right here as well. So we went ahead and created a user. If I wanted to change to that user, I have to be sudo or I have to know their password. So if I do su space hyphen space Batman and press enter, it's gonna ask me for the password to make sure that I am able to do that. So I'll type in the password and now I'm Batman. And then you could just simply type log out to log out. And now I'm back to my main user. And you see the prompt changed because my prompt was different because I have a user specific configuration for my user, but this is probably more along the lines of the prompt you would normally see anyway. So I was able to log in as Batman by simply doing SU dash and then Batman. Of course, I could log out and log, as, log in as him directly. But if you do sudo SU space hyphen and then Batman, notice it didn't ask me for Batman's password because if you're root, you could do whatever the heck you want. You don't even need to know somebody's password. In fact, you can change the password for the user if you wanted to. Now, normally, as your own user, you just do passwd to change your password. So now that I'm logged in as Batman, I could change password by just doing passwd. And I'd need to type in the current one. And then I'll type in a new password. And then again. And the password was updated. Now, if I was using sudo, which is the same as doing something as root, I could just do sudo pass wd batman. And it's not asking me for Batman's current password. Again, root can do anything it wants. And if you use sudo, you're automatically using the root user. So I'll just change Batman's password. And you can see that I was able to do that because I'm root. And if you want to actually be root, you can simply do sudo su hyphen just like that. And now you can see I'm actually logged in as root. So the same thing. Notice it's not gonna ask me for his current password because again, I am root and I can do anything I want. It would help if I actually typed the right password because it does need to match when it prompts you. I just had a typo, but you get the idea. I can simply type exit or log out. To log out, I can even do control D on the keyboard to log out as well, which is actually what I do. I find it to be the easiest method and I'll clear the screen. So I showed you how to add a user now I'm going to show you how to remove a user. Now what I'm going to do is sudo because you do need to be sudo to remove a user. And I'm going to use user del dash r and then the name of the user that I want to remove. Now be very careful with this because you know you're removing a user and the dash r what that's actually going to do is also remove the home directory. So if you don't want to remove the files for the user you definitely don't want to include dash r. If you're working for a company for example you might have a requirement to retain files for a certain amount of time, in which case, um, you know, you might not want to remove the files. But if you don't care and you want to remove the user and the files, you use the dash R. So I'll press enter. And you can ignore this var spool not found thing. We can see that we no longer have a Batman directory. And then that's the password. We don't have Batman listed there either, so I managed to defeat Batman. I did what Joker was never able to do. I successfully defeated the Batman. Now, joking aside, um, I wanna show you guys how to create a group. So I'm going to use sudo group add, and then I'll just make a group heroes. And that's it. That's basically how you add a group. So if I do cat Etsy group, you can see that it did create a heroes group for me and it gave it the group ID of 1002. Now, my groups are just these. As I mentioned, I have, I'm a member of these groups right here. So I can add myself to that group by doing sudo user mod dash lowercase a, uppercase g, and then the name of the group. So I'll do heroes and then my username because that's the name that I want to add to the group. And then I'll press enter and clear the screen. And then I could just do groups. And you can see, wait a minute, it's not actually listing my new group here. What's up with that? Well, actually, you have to log out and log in in order to take advantage of being 
added to a group. But if I was just to simply do groups and then my username, which is actually going to read the appropriate files, you can see that I am, actually am a member of that group, but it's not going to actually take effect until I log out and log in, and that's why it didn't show here. When you're doing groups and then the name, it's actually checking to, to see what groups you're a member of, even if it's not something in your current session. So I am a member of that group. All right, clear the screen. So how do you remove a user from a group? Well, that's pretty easy, actually. To do that, we could do g pass wd dash d, and then the name of the user, which is mine, and then the name of the group you want to remove that user from. So I'll remove that user from heroes. And, you know, I keep forgetting sudo, so, you know, just goes to show you that even somebody with um, as many years experience as I have, we also forget to do that as well. But again, I can use sudo and then exclamation mark twice to actually repeat that command, but with sudo, so I'll do that. And it says it's removing me from group heroes. So if I do groups and my username, you can see that I'm not a member of the group anymore. So we have the heroes group. So how do we get rid of that group? Well, actually we just use group, D-E-L, and we need sudo in front of that, and then the name of the group we want to get rid of. So if I do tail Etsy group, you can see heroes there at the bottom, and now I can do sudo group del heroes and press enter. We can see that now heroes, that group is now gone, and we successfully removed it. So, you know, that was fairly high level. User management does get more involved than that, but it's important to at least know how to add a user remove a user, add a group, remove a group, and also add a user to a group, and then remove a user from that group. And, you know, we've done that. So um, we've satisfied the goal in this video. So stay tuned. I have more coming in this series very soon, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.